The Southeast Idaho Paranormal Organization is interested in finding interesting places around Idaho uh, that most people haven't seen. This is a secret canyon in the Twin Falls area. It's private land and not too many people get to come here and see what this canyon's all about. The Southeast Idaho Paranormal Organization has had the opportunity to come and stay here and check it out a little bit. And what we found was this canyon is actually full of mystery. It may look like an ordinary canyon, but what we found here may go far deeper and further back than anywhere else that we've been before. So join us tonight on Mysterious Destinations here in Twin Falls, Idaho. Right above. They would come here at specific times during the year, and that would be a time of festival, a time of trade, and a time where, plain and simple, young people could get to know each other and intermarry. Shadow! Probably going down into the canyon to do sacred ceremonies. Or there's something out there. Did you hear it move? I just heard it move right there. I was very impressed when I came uh, to this canyon simply because it does not look like anything I've seen in this area. In fact, there were many uh, different characteristics of this canyon that reminded me of such exotic places such as Belize and Guatemala and Mexico. I looked up through that hole, all of a sudden it was really fast, but it just went whoosh. And it was like it, blacked, it, it blocked out the light for just a millisecond, but it was just, it was, it was like almost a blink. When uh, Scott told me that uh, he saw a shadow, I said, oh boy, that could be nothing. It could be something paranormal or it could be the mountain lion I heard about. I said, this could be an adventure because the, the closer I looked at everything, I hadn't expected so many caves to be around and I hadn't expected you know, the inside of a canyon to be so inhabitable because, you know, I guess my image of canyons is restricted to what I saw in Roadrunner cartoons straight up and down. So that's what they mean when they say people lived in this canyon. It's more like a very, very steep valley. So here in the canyon, we have one of many different uh, rock shelters. Uh, rock shelters like this would have been used for thousands of years. Uh, in this part, uh, we've actually found a few uh, pottery shards as well as some fire hearths. So we know that there was occupation. We're being extremely careful right now because the owner has let us know that there's actually a mountain lion that may live deeper in these rocks. Um, but as you can see as we walk through here, this really may have been some sort of domestic area. And in fact, as we look right here uh, we have a, a feature this is possibly an ancient wall 
I mean, it, it definitely seems like it's very straight. We have rocks piled up on top of each other. And so very possibly at one time there was a ancient wall here. You can imagine maybe, um, maybe the men sitting out here, maybe this is where they would eat. Uh, we have a gorgeous view, but we have rocks all around, so it's really well protected. But as you can see, this rock shelter goes quite a ways over here. So this area right here would be great for a domestic setting where you could bring large groups of people or even smaller groups, a family or a couple of families. Uh, you have different domestic areas, cook, clean, have another place for children to play, men to sit and talk. We, uh, I had some psychics uh, come here. One was from Denmark, who was a base jumper visiting in the town. And I took him around the property and showed him these sites. And he determined from his, what the, the energy that he was picking up was that this was a place where they made their meals. One of the guides that was leading him around took us to a rock ledge and we actually climbed up to the top to an overhang which used to be uh, a lookout point. And he told him that was his favorite spot because the, they could smell the food being prepared from this place and also could see the uh, ancient sauna. We know another psychic was here recently and she said the same thing, that this was an area where a lot of spiritual activity is, uh, kind of the uh, vortex of the energy field that she felt. And so we feel that there is a lot of uh, paranormal activity that you'll find in this cave and inside. Okay, so we found this cave back here. Scott's in the cave. I'm going to run the camera to him real quick and see if we can get some pictures back there. Okay. Okay, Scott, here comes the camera, and it's filming. <laughs> sure you can see my feet by now. We we'll might need Crisco to get me out of here. Should have had one of the boys send it. Okay, you get it? Almost, just like a little more. Just Let a me little get more. one more knee in here. There we are. Okay. Right there. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to flash my light down there. Um, this goes pretty far back. Where'd your horses go, um, This is only big enough for uh, an animal. No. If you're a human, no, I, don't I don't think you'd want to try and get back there. But um, you can see, again, the, uh, you know, Native Americans would have loved this. I mean... Uh, they would bury people in caves, they would do things, but they really revered caves. And uh, they would look at these as spiritual places, places of the underworld. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to go, but uh, again, kind of interesting. You can kind of smell a skunk. Um, so I'm getting a little worried. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to have a skunk chase me or anything like that, but... So... Okay, I'd like to uh, start this EVP session. My name's Scott. I'd like to invite anything that's here, if you'd please communicate with us. Uh, we have some equipment here that we believe will help us communicate with you, if that is your wish and desire. Uh, we're not here to harm you. Uh, we're not here to push you out. We just want to make some contact with you. Over here, farther in the cave, we have two items. We have a kind of rectangular box, and it has one light on it, a green light. If you go wave your hand or step on it or just get close to it, we're hoping that it will interact with you and that you'll make some lights move up and down. It's actually kind of neat if you want to try it. Move up and down. It's actually kind of neat if you want to try it. And I'm not here to harm you, but I do want to ask some questions. And if you're here in this rock shelter, why do you remain in this place? Or why do you remain in this canyon? Was it 
something about this canyon that makes you remain here or visit here or, or just be here at this time? Can you make some sort of sign for us? If you don't want us here, you're going to need to communicate with us. I'll tell you what, if you can make those lights move, That green light right there, if you can make it move, we will leave. Uh, they've often said that uh, specters exist because there's unfinished business or they left the world of the living. Uh, if there's some sort of wrongdoing, does any of that apply? Are you trying to get something done? Are you trying to tell the inhabitants of this canyon something? Or did you die in a wrongful way? And how long have you been gone, departed of the world of the living? you die in a wrongful way and how long have you been gone departed of the world of the living and is there a particular reason you're reticent to communicate about all the questions I have. You covered pretty much most of the rest of it. Yeah. Are you catching salmon? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I would love to get on that other side and just... Absolutely. Like you, you can see, can, you can yeah, you can see where, where you see how you look around. I can the see the pass. Yeah. Well, I heard that he was really bad. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. If you look, you can see where they were walking along boat? the sides. In your boat. You can also kind of see where they were yeah. digging a little yeah, bit. Yeah. See, right like there. Like right there. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Like right there. Well, you can see the indentation. Yeah, you can see like, see how it comes down, and then we have kind of a bare spot. Yeah, a bare spot. Mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. and then there's big, big no, that exactly. Spot. That's where they were digging. I consider traces of things that were once living. You might call those ghosts uh, to be more of a possibility now, because maybe maybe the universe was out to prove something to me because i you know generally approach these things very skeptically uh i don't know if i would call it ghosts in the way that most people think of them because when most people think of ghosts they think of a very highly intelligent creature who will interact with you and throw knives and you know dinner forks across the room but as far as some trace of something living that was once there and can interact with human beings to a limited degree yeah it's all my mind up to that possibility because you know, I saw concrete evidence of something that I can't explain. An X-File? Okay. One really neat thing about this canyon is that it wasn't just inhabited in ancient times. In modern day, there have been several different people inhabit this area. As you can see, against this uh, the cliff on the other side of the river especially down there it's very clear you can see a what looks like to be the entrance of a cave what that is is it is actually a Chinese mine in the at the turn of the century late 1800s the Chinese actually came down this canyon and mined it for different types of ores the Chinese were not allowed to uh, mine with the rest of the people. So what the Chinese were forced to do is they had to go along the river and they had to dig their mines in this very treacherous and rugged uh, riverside. And today you can still see the remnants on the cliff face of what is left of their mines. I'm sure that if we went down there today and we began to search and dig around in those rocks, we could find artifacts left from those Chinese miners who mined this cliff face so long ago.
Look at that. He jumped all the way up to the red for a second. Not sure why. Hmm. I guess it's done now, isn't it? I didn't see it. Go ahead and talk. There it is oh, again. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. You got any electrical devices anywhere? No. Speak any Chinese? No. If you're here with us, can you make it do that one more time? Okay, we take that as a yes. Big yes. Were you Chinese? Did you mine in this area? Did you know anyone that mined in this area? Did you die here? Did you die on the other side in one of the mines? Who does not know? Here we go. What do you want us to know? Just won't stop. Is it a woman? <laughs> Are you a man? Are you a woman? Is it man -hand? Are you still here with us? Kind of like the 4th of July. <laughs> Just wanted to say hi. That was wild. That was crazy. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone, whatever it was. See that? Yeah, I got it. Okay, because it jumped up to yellow. Are you here again with us? Or are you just passing by? Nothing. There's, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no electrical fields out here. It's like right when we turned around to walk hey. away. Something just made my camera go wide zoom by itself. Are you positive? Yeah, it just went by itself. Zooming on anything in particular? It just yeah. zoomed all by itself. Out of curiosity, where did it zoom to? Did it zoom up there somewhere? No, it just zoomed straight down to the ground. I went like this, the next thing I know is I'm watching it zoom and my hand isn't touching anything. The thing that's crazy is there's no electricity out here. Like there's my absolutely... phone battery died a long time ago. I left it at camp. Well, your phone battery wouldn't do that. I mean, Jeez. I know. I'm just saying. I left it way back at camp because I close broke the battery. How close do I have to get before it all? Nothing. Doesn't even do anything. Nothing. Basking. It's not the camera. It's. It can't be the camera. It would be doing that all the time. Yeah. Those were some pretty high fields. Yeah. Well, that one it sustained. Yeah. It were, like it literally looked like. Like it was trying to communicate to your friend. Yeah, or really intensely. Towards the end of the night, we walked over to the other side of the canyon, over to where the Chinese mines were, 
And so it's very rocky, it's a cool place, but the thing is, is there's no electricity there, there's nothing there. When we were there, we began to ask questions about if there was anybody there, if they were Chinese miners, things of that sort, and suddenly the K2 meter just went wild. It lit all the way up and it stayed lit. Out next to the waterfall, uh, when the K2 meter went off, there was no reason for it. Uh, there was nothing electrical around. The water was hundreds of feet below us. Um, there was no lightning at the time. Uh, the rain wasn't happening. And it seemed to respond every time someone would ask it a question. I asked a few uh, flippant questions, and this guy asked it a few more serious questions, and nothing happened. And literally, we were going to turn around to leave. I mean, that thing like skyrocketed in a way that's practically unchartable because usually even when it jumps to a full reading it, it, it's in kind of a flicker or like lights blink on and off this was you know full-on lights completely solid completely all the way up in in the whole semicircle formation so I, I I define that as that was beyond a maximum reading as we were standing there near the cliff talking to the Chinese mines that are on the other side all of a sudden the K2 meter just started to light up like a Christmas tree. And it wasn't just one quick bleep. It was a sustained um, hit on the K2 meter. All of us were watching it and we couldn't believe that the K2 meter was going berserk as it was. Uh, it really seemed like something was trying to communicate. I began to ask him very specific questions, and I knew that there had been Chinese miners in the area, so I began to ask if perhaps one of their entities was in the area. And the K2 meter continued to get hit very hard as I asked that question. At my first investigation with CPO, I had a lot of fun. The guys and the gals were great. Um, very professional organization. And the investigation they took me on was fun and it was entertaining and very educational. Um, I'd never been on an investigation like this that was so focused on history rather than just basically thrill seeking. I learned a lot from it. Uh, I look forward to doing investigations with CPO again in the future. I loved the canyon. I thought it was a great place to go and we felt very honored um, as CPO to be able to come into the canyon and have a guided tour um, with the stones. They are wonderful people and we've really enjoyed um, listening to their stories and listening to the history of the area. My impressions of uh, the CPO group, uh, even beginning when I first met the Bryan brothers, was of total professionalism. They came well prepared. They were looking not just for like the uh, thrill part of things, but they were interested in the historical aspect of this canyon and, and had the utmost respect for the canyon, for the investigation, and throughout the time that they were there uh, and honored the wishes of the owners. The investigation was performed with the utmost integrity. Uh, my overall impression of the canyon is, again, it was, it was an excellent investigation. I really liked the canyon. And the reason why is because it, it was an investigation that fit our group very well. Uh, we had an interesting location. We had lots of good stories, but yet there was a lot of mystery there, too. You could see that this was a place that people had been going for a very long time. And as an anthropologist, I can look at areas like that and just imagine what the stories were uh, behind that canyon. I like to walk up to the canyon walls and just stand there with my back against the wall and look straight up and feel the power coming off that wall. And it's very, very strong to me. I can feel it everywhere down there. And I really, truly feel like it could be a place of the beginning. It's just every time I go down there, there's a time that I can't, there's never been a time that I can't feel those feelings. And they're very strong to me, I, I, uh, overwhelming to anything else almost. And it's almost like uh, when I'm down with people giving them a tour or something, it's, I don't feel possessed necessarily, but 
I feel like I'm speaking for the people that I'm discovering, is a good way to put it, maybe.